Mr. George Michael, what a pleasure to meet you. And you. And thank having, you very much. Having, we've, we've twittered each other. We have, yeah. tweeted each other. Yeah. For many months, which has been, um, which is, so I'm glad to finally meet you. And now it's great to, to see you face to face. I've got to say, first of all, probably the most important question. How are you? You look fantastic. Oh, thank you. It's been a very difficult People few months. People keep saying that. People keep really saying well. that. I'm going to start believing it soon. <laughs> um, I feel great. I feel great. I'm, I'm working every day in the studio. And writing for me when it's going well is, that's about the best feeling I, well, next to standing in front of the audience that finally receives that music, you know, and, and uh, sharing it with them. Writing uh, when things are going well is the best feeling I know, you know. And I think something like this is, I mean, obviously it's its life-affirming, isn't it? You were in such a bad place and it's kind of taken you, well, it's its not that long to recover, is it? Well, I was a, like actually, that. yeah, I was i was told to take it easy this year. Um, but I found with the kind of post tra- post op stress that you go through, it's a bit like you know. Apparently, it's very similar to post traumatic stress disorder. Um, and I was advised to lay off work, and I promised everybody I would. But I just don't know what to do if I'm mm. not working. Is it know? the work that's got you through? Yeah, the work has definitely got me through this year, definitely. And I must admit, I have laid, I've, I've. You know, made a pretty strong rod for my back. No pun intended, because I do actually have a rod in my back. Um, but uh, yeah, I I made a rod for my own back by by squashing everything together. But I'm, um, I don't know any other way to. Uh, I don't know any other way to be really. If I'm not creating something, I get very restless very quickly. Yeah. And uh, so I'm doing the album, and then and then doing the tour straight after. And then an, Aus- an Australian tour after the British tour and a European tour. And, um, it's going to be a packed out year, really. I've made myself uh, a promise that I will take it easy next year and uh, start to enjoy some time with my lovely new man. Well, he's not new. It's eight, eight, nine, month, eight nine months now, which is about five years in, our, in, in the gay community, isn't it, really? I think it's... Yeah. So... Um, but we haven't really had a chance to, to to really relax together for very long, for 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 a, a good while now because I've been working so hard. Has what you've been through brought you closer together as a couple? Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, we and we'd only been really seeing each other at the time for about a month, and I can only imagine what it feels like to fall in love with someone and then have them nearly die on mm. you. You know, and that's. I think it was a very horrible time for him, and he's been an uh, absolute rock. For me, this year is fantastic. I think it probably strengthens you as a person as well. That kind of experience, both yeah, for both of you, I think. For, for both of us, I think um, yes. I think it's a very unfortunate way to start your relationship, but it's. Um, but I, I think it has. Uh, I don't know. It, it it brought us very close in a much um, more immediate and emergence. Uh, so it was a, in that that sense of emergency. And relief, I think, brought us closer, you know. It's very difficult to comprehend how that experience was for you because obviously I've not experienced that mm. and a lot of people haven't experienced mm. that. How does it change you as a person to go through that? Um, I don't think it changes you as a person. I think it uh, hopefully will... I mean, um, I've been doing this all morning, but I, I've got a tracheostomy scar there and, I, and it really bothered me for a while. And I was thinking, well... Maybe I should get something done about it. I know you can have scar treatment. But then I thought a couple of weeks ago, I was looking in the mirror, and then I thought, you know what? It does actually remind me every time I look at it that I'm lucky to be alive. Sure. Um, So I've decided to keep it. Like a little motif. Like a little motif, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's quite butch, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Scar there, you know. (laughs) I've got a few. What does the other half think of that? (laughs) Uh, What? The fact that... The scar. I think he quite likes it, actually, yeah. (laughs) It and is. you've obviously got a very positive thing to come out of this, many positive things to come out of this mm. experience, looking on the bright side, of course. Yeah. Um, white Light, the single, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think it's the most um, kind of powerful thing in terms of up-tempo music I've written for quite a while. It gave me it? goosebumps the first time I heard it. It really? still does, actually, on the really? repeated list. Yeah, oh, definitely. that's great. That's what I want to hear. That's what we like to hear. You know, there are so many people um, in our community who've come through terrible times whether it be through their outing through uh hiv diagnosis or anything there are so many things that gay people have to kind of celebrate these days i think it should 
uh, I think it resonates with a with a lot of us. You know? Yeah, it's ultimately joyous, isn't it? Yes, ultimately it's a celebration of of survival. Yeah. And Kate Moss in the video, which I saw for the first time this morning, I think it got put online this morning, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Today. Yeah, today. She saves you, and the coin tossing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very symbolic. Yeah, it's all very symbolic. All metaphors everywhere. You know, the the black, the the black ravens and the white doves, and the black and white zebra representing you know the the darkness of death and, and the brightness of life, really. And I, I, I think um, there, there are also references in there to some of the amazing singers that we've lost in the past couple of years. And you can't help as a singer, especially as from the era Michael and, and uh, Whitney came from, you can't help feeling like you dodged a bullet that they didn't manage to dodge, you know. Um, I was never a heroin, heroin addict, obviously, but... Uh, I I did dodge a bullet, no mm. question, sure. um, and uh, in a way that kind of reinforces um, the the feeling of privilege I have at being able to. And I do think my real privilege is that I still believe in what I do, and I think I'm still capable of making people happy with my music. Um, and after 30 years, that's just amazing, just amazing. I think that goes without saying. I think you've just got to take a look at Twitter. The response when we've been playing your single, the response has been phenomenal. Really? You affect so many people. It's great. Well, you never know with Twitter. They're so loving. It's kind of a, just a wash of love, really, isn't yeah, it? With yeah. the occasional person going, I liked him better when he was straight. <laughs> you know. But other than, you know, I, I mean, it's it's always, I do I do read my Twitter stuff and I am very, um, uh, I am very heartened by it, put it that way. Can we talk about revolving urinals, which I think is probably... Was my idea. It's a fantastic was idea as well. Idea. I, I would never forget seeing that for the first time because I thought you were so brave during that whole time, I think, as well. But to actually do it in such a tongue-in-cheek way well, and can I just, almost can I tell you how it happened? Can I tell you how it happened? Yeah, it please, literally please. was... Um, <clears throat> I'd already made Fast Love and Spinning the Wheel with two video directors, Genius couple that that were a couple and then were just a business couple uh, um, a working couple uh called Anthea and Vaughan and I'd already made those two I think spectacular videos Fast Love and, and Spinning the Wheel and Vaughan came to um they stopped working together but Vaughan came to LA because he wanted to make he wanted to make something for outside and Vaughan sat with me looking very nervous and I couldn't work out why. And then after about half an hour, he said, can I be really honest with you? I said, yeah, of course you can. And he said, can we do it in a toilet? <laughs> <laughs> so I sat and looked at him. It's got to be a glitzy one, though, isn't it? Can't no, be. but I, 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 that's exactly right. I sat, and, I sat and, and looked at him, and it took me about 10 seconds to say, yes, but it's got to be a disco toilet. Right. That's fantastic, and that's basically as simple as it was. Yeah. And you know, and then I had that, and then I immediately had the idea of the revolving urinals and everything, which is my, my I think it's probably the favorite, my favorite three seconds of any video I've ever made. Did, did you ever think that was a bad thing to do, though? Did you ever consider that to be at the back of your mind that that would go horribly wrong? Because I think you nailed it completely. No, I didn't think it would go wrong. I thought if it's funny enough and uh, and. If the record is good enough, then you can get away with murder. People you know? got it as well. I don't think it was just the gay gay community that got it. It was the straight people that. Thought yeah, it was fun and I, too. and the other thing was, you know, as a man who'd been, who'd stayed in the closet to keep his more p- poor mother from worrying about HIV every day, yeah. who was desperate to come out. You know, I, I mean, I showed my desperation to come out just in how I was almost complicit in the whole setup between the press and the and the police. Because believe me, it was a setup. Um, I think I I immediately thought, well, what can I do with this? As someone who had not been able, even though I'd spent a lot of time raising money for HIV over the the past 15 years by that point, I suppose, um, I just felt, okay, what can I do in one fell swoop that I know will will be good for some of the gay community? I immediately thought, well, when I started cruising, which is when I was very young, um, I would have been so unbelievably thrilled if someone that I liked musically had made that video because it would have lightened the burden of shame by, I don't know, 90%. I would have been thrilled, you know. I would probably, it probably 
Actually, it's probably a good thing it didn't happen. I probably would have done it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I thought this is really going to help some kids overcome some of their shame. You know, if it's good enough for George Michael. Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you feel about it now, looking back? Because obviously it was a while ago. And, and uh, how do you think you've changed? You, are you ever... Because you, you strike me as the sort of person that doesn't feel uncomfortable talking about it, which I think is great, because a lot of people probably would. Or no, yeah, a lot of would, people, they don't talk quite about guilty it. Or, or they, they lie. Comfortable. You yeah. know, or they lie totally, and hide yeah. it from people. Um, I, what's the point? You know, in terms of discretion, that horse bolted <laughs> that afternoon, didn't it? <laughs> And the fact that it's a tourist attraction now, that, that toilet as yeah, well. Yeah, they have to constantly, that's, their, that's their, their payback for actually having entrapped me, is that they have to have that, that toilet cleaned much more <laughs> regularly because the, the writing is, you know, just builds up on it every It's like a little pilgrimage yeah. people make to that toilet. You, At least you, I've let, I've had them make a pilgrimage to a to a nice clean toilet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's Beverly, that's the way Beverly to go. Hills, remember that, Beverly, <laughs> Beverly Hills. Do you wish you'd come out sooner, and, in and hindsight? Um... Um, oh, well, you know what? You know, the truth is, I would have done. I would have stayed probably. I, I'm sure once, um, once there was a public understanding, which I still don't think there is, of, of uh, how treatable HIV is now. I think maybe then, if uh, then maybe in, it, maybe a, a little later, I would have come out because I would have been able to explain to my mum. You don't have to worry about this is not a death sentence anymore. You don't have to worry about this happening every day, you know. Um, but I would have done it. I'd do it again because I was protecting her. And um, and the, the stigma and the fear and the death around HIV at the time was so real. I thought if I'm this neurotic about it, I mean, because I really was neurotic. I was more careful than careful. You know what mm. I mean? And I thought if I'm this neurotic about it, then my mother, I knew, knew just... I knew her so well. I knew it would be a constant weight on her. And it was stupid of me, I suppose. And she would have hated the fact that I did anything but live my life to protect her. But I would do it again. I would do it again. Uh, and I, you know, for God's sake, when I made the older album and dedicated it to my late um, um, partner, you know, around the stage of the promotion at one point I had a proper handlebar moustache I was trying in every way I chopped the hair I'd done the got the moustache I was trying in every way to say look I'm not trying to hide something here I just don't want to talk to the press you know that was a great look I'm a big fan of the tash especially like, the handlebar tash oh really yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> also I thought I could get away with it now the edge had one <laughs> <laughs> okay another confession I saw you I think it was 1984 when you played with Wham at the Cornwall Coliseum. And I do remember vividly going through adolescence at the time of being, uh, being quite kind of impressed by the fact that you were arriving on stage with Andrew mm -hmm. in your badminton get-up and you were pushing <laughs> shuttlecocks down your pants and beating them out into the crowd. Well, quite literally beating them out into the crowd. <laughs> oh, you've, got to, you've got to give I it to us. You have to hand it to us, really, don't you? <laughs> you have to hand it to us. We were, we were, we were full of self-ridicule. And that's what I think, actually, it's amazing, but people look back on that and they think you actually took that seriously. No, we wanted to have as much of a laugh as, as possible And that stage. really showed Wham was out and out pop, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. In, in a great way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was fun. And and things popped out of Wham Coxons. Uh, well, know? yeah. Shuttlecocks. And I, I, I didn't see anything else popping out that night. No, but no. It, it, that's it never going to happen. Mind. That's one never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so you had an effect on me at a, a very early age. Um, the new album... Two or three of the tracks, the lyrical content is really based, uh, aimed at, at our community, and um, uh, and yes, I, I know there'll be absolutely loads of great remixes and stuff. It's very dance orientated album, you know. That's great to hear. No, it definitely is going to be. Um, I think it's going to be a floor filler. I hope. Brilliant. The Symphonica tour as well. Obviously, it's back. Um, are you going to be touring the States as well? Because a lot of people have been asking if you're going to be touring um, the States. I'm hopefully going to be touring the States uh, early next year, hopefully. Um, I've got to get these these shows done and then an Australian tour done. Um, and I think, you know, God willing, I, sh I shall be in America at some point early next year to start the whole process of, you know, it all takes so long to set up, you know. And I'm amazed you're doing it so soon. Yeah, well, like I said, I was told I was supposed to supposed to take it easy, but I just couldn't. I just just you know I was dealing with a lot of anxiety, and the only way to 
to distract myself. So if there's anything to, that distracts me from everything, it's music. Mm -hmm. I just become completely tunnel visioned. Um, it's the safest place in the world for me, the, the recording studio. Yeah. You know, kind of takes your mind off stuff, I guess, as well. Well, yeah, you have to focus absolutely on every tiny detail. So there's no room for you to, you know, sit there worrying about your life. It's not like a lot of data, you know, nine to five jobs where there's plenty of time for anxiety. Yeah. There's really not. In, you know, in a studio, you're, you're totally concentrated the whole time. I'm very careful about asking you about Wham. We touched on Wham, but it's very important because obviously it's 30 years. It's an anniversary, isn't it? Yeah. Since you started. It's pretty amazing that 30 years later, everyone anyone gives a shit, really, isn't it? That's don't great. People don't do. People, think? Yeah. I mean, I don't... memories. I, 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 you know, I've, I said this in, in a recent press release, but it's everything that's happened is way, way, way beyond anything that I expected. All I wanted as a child was to be on top of the pops. That's all I thought of. That was, to me, that was the peak of, of fame. I didn't think of international fame. I didn't think of th 30 years. I just wanted to get on top of the pops. But the reunion's not happening. Absolutely not. It's not happening. Because there has been No, no reunion. Nada reunion. You're probably sick to death of... <laughs> well, it just <laughs> comes up every that. year, doesn't it? It yeah. comes up every year. And, you know, sorry, people, but it's not happening. So, finally, what's next? Because you've achieved so much. But what do you want to achieve? Um, the next few I don't want to say, but I've definitely got plans. Plans. Because you don't want to jinx big plans. Jinx things. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to promise things that don't happen, and I don't want to jinx things. But I definitely have big plans. Definitely. It's probably good to keep it a mystery as well. Yeah, it I think keeps so. people on their toes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a couple of things that people aren't going to be expecting. I think. It's fantastic to see you looking so well. Thank you. And so great to meet you finally. And thank you very much for taking you, the time Phil. to chat to us. And you're actually, your online picture doesn't do you justice. <laughs> thank you very much. You should change your online picture. <laughs> I'll, I'll have words. I'll actually, become, a, become a diva, I think, back in the office. Isn't it a bit, isn't it a bit a like diva? a George Michael picture and your whole face isn't showing? <laughs> <laughs> one of those. The one that's on there currently, actually, I'm definitely going to have words with because it's horrendous. Oh, really? Do yeah. they, did they change it without asking? They change you? it without asking. Oh, okay. I think you should have words for me on, yeah. my, on my behalf. <laughs> no, I think definitely you need to find a photographer that's going to do Phil justice. Oh, you're so mm. sweet. Thank you very much, George. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, you too.